Tabby Twapens. Once upon a time, there was a stray kitten called Tabby. We was all in and had nae him to bide in. She was awfully shy and fear to the muckle human she saw around her. You see, Tabby was a dainty wee hing, and her fur was grey and black, the same colours of the streets and buildings around her. This made her invisible to the big people walking by. Poor Tabby. She often had to jump out the way of folk's feet. It was nae wonder she was a bit fear to the big folk. There was yin hing that was muckle about Tabby though, and that was her appetite for sweet treats. Tabby bided in a close in the big city. In the close there were a few doors and yin of them belonged to a baker's shop. Every morning Tabby would be sleeping by the back door and afore she opened her in she would sniff the air and smile in her dreams. She would smell the delicious steaming hot pies and cakes baking and cooling behind the door. The smell would fill up her wee nose and it would waken her up. And cos Tabby was awfully wee and no very brickly coloured, she was able to sneak it in when the door opened. She would slink about, jouking in about the trays and cupboards, pick her moment and swipe what treats she could carry out. The steaming pies full of mutton were always too hot to grab, so she would aim for the cooler pastries and cakes instead. Tabby would tuck them back to her wee hidey place in the close and store them to eat for the rest of the day. As time passed by, Tabby grew bigger and sometimes the baker would see her when she tried to sneak it in. And he would wave his rolling pin at her and shout at her, Get it! Get it! And he'd chase her out the door all angry like. She was off with fear to the baker man, and these weren't the good days for wee Tabby, and she would often go on hungry and have to look in the smelly bins. Cold chips and stale sandwiches were naked. No when you were used with warm Danish pastries and fresh cream donuts to munch. Tabby would often dream about having a home where a nice human would feed her cream cakes. Then yen day, the baker's shop shut and never opened again. Poor Tabby, how would she ever get a chance to grab her favourite treats again? Oh, she was awfully downhearted and awfully hungry when she decided to be brave and venture out the close to see if she could fin another baker's shop. Tabby's belly rumult and grumult as she craved for sweet cakes and pastries. She would dream about it every night. She had tried hunting mice and ruttons, but they were way right too smart to be caught by her. Tabby won it for days, eating out of bins and trying to find a new baker's shop to stay close by to. Eventually, she found herself out just outside the city among the houses. It was here her wee nose sniffed the air and she caught the smell of something. Something good! Something sweet! She followed the trail and found herself under an open windy. What could she smell? It was a freshly baked cake, and it was sitting just inside the windy sill. Tabby took a deep breath, hunkered down, then looked up and clambered inside the windy. And there it was, a big green cake with a red ribbon round it, curly pink icing on the top. She minded on that this was what the baker called a birthday cake. And Tabby was fair hungry. She was slavering at the mouth and thinking of how good it would be to lick the icing and tuck a big bite of the cake. Oh, she just had to hear a bit. So she looked around to see if there was only big humans about and then she saw something else. There on the table next to the birthday cake was a bowl full of custard and jelly and cream and on the top was a big red cherry. A trifle! Oh, this was Tabby's idea of heaven! Birthday cake and trifle! Yes! She looked for the bowl to the cake, the cake to the bowl. Her hungry belly rummelled and burbled. She hunkered down and then looked face first into the cake, licking the icing and biting at the soft layers of cake and creamy jam inside. 
cabby purred with joy at the sweet flavours and the satisfying fullness growing in her hungry belly. When she'd had enough cake, she licked her paws and stared lovingly at the bowl of trifle. Licking her lips, she hunkered down, then looped head first into the bowl of trifle. She stuck her head right into the trifle and gulped down what she could. The flavours of the cream, the custard, the jelly made her purr with delight. Oh, she didn't care that the fur and whiskers on her face were getting clabbered with jelly, cream and custard. No way. She was too busy in this rapturous moment to take notice of anything around her. Because what happened next was a wee lassie walked into the room. The lassie very gently reached out to hold Tabby by the middle. And she pulled her ever so slowly and carefully out of the bowl of trifle. Tabby didn't mind nor try to get away. She was far too contented to care. Tabby purred to herself and licked the cream off her wee nose. The wee lassie turned Tabby round to get a good look at the strange cat that she just pulled out the trifle. Between the cat's lugs, a cherry was stuck on top. Oh, a dollop of cream, and there was Julie stuck to her whiskers. And the lassie laughed and hugged Tabby close. <laughs> Just then, the lassie's mother walked in and gasped, oh, What a moger! The birthday cake was in ruins, and the trifle was just a guddle. Tabby purred happily next to the wee lassie's lug. And the wee lassie squealed happily to her mammy. Oh, mammy, I wanted a cat for my birthday. Thanks, mammy. She's so cute. Tabby just kept purring and licking her lips. She didn't feel fear to these humans at all. The lassie's mother looked at Tabby's contented face and could see that she must be astray. So she sighed and smiled and tickled Tabby under her sticky chin. Then she says, Well, this cat looks like she needs a home. Let's keep her and let's call her Tabby Twa Puddins. <laughs>